Rock Valier, from rock breaking to mini, medium, and large excavation. Stock of varieties of soil and aggregate, sand and gravel, we carry it all. Demolition, private roads to septic systems. We get the job done right with competitive pricing and years of experience to draw from. For professional and attentive service, call Rock Valier and get your free estimate today. 450-242-2544. Rock Valier, 11 Glen Road in West Bolton. Are you in your golden years and looking for a secure country setting to call home? Consider Knoll Banks, a certified private home for seniors. Just a stroll away from beautiful downtown Knowlton, Knoll Banks offers rooms and suites complete with bathrooms, large windows, and home-cooked meals. Professional attentive staff are available 24 hours a day to cater to your needs. Learn of the many services available to you at 263-0032 or 243-6455. Knoll Banks, for peace of mind. Cable Action, your local internet, television, and telephone provider offering the best price on the market for cable networks. Crave speed? Enjoy a steady 15 megabyte per second internet connection wherever you are. Plus, Action's basic TV service comes with over 60 digital channels and loads of theme packages and HD channels to choose from. Sign up a friend for an additional rebate. Action hires locally and sponsors community events. Everyone wins with Action Cable. Visit Action.ca or call 1-866-552-9466. Hello, everybody. Welcome to... It was called oh, Unleashed. Unleashed with Emma Sorry, and the chauffeur. Know. Yes. It's so cold out there today. And I'm Scotty. Hey, Scotty. Charmin and my nipples Who's were with standing us? up. Who's with us today? <laughs> well, a... um, I'm Charmin Yarnell. <laughs> Thank you, yes, Charmin. Let's wonder... change, well, change, so change so subject. She went, she went to this nipples show. before she went to Charmin. This yeah. show is a very, bit of a bitch. How <laughs> very titillating. <laughs> titillating. <laughs> okay. Yes, oh, we God. welcome our dear Charmin and our dear, dear Walter to the show. It's great, ah, as always, so to have you So two dears for Walter, one dear for Charmin, eh? No, well, she... Did you catch that, Charmin? I caught it. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yes. Emma will pay for that later. I will pay for that later. And she also told me. me to give her the eye when a certain something came up because yes. I was good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your rent? Let's hear okay. your rent. I need to All right, everybody. You're listening to is... Unleashed, the X rated version. I did say version. that. <laughs> All right, as always. My rant, which is doesn't really change from one week to the next. It just there's a lot more things added to it actually. The puppy mills, rid of them. Pet stores, stop selling the animals. People don't go in, make complaints, ask for the papers. Uh, you know we can't really rely on the government for for the laws that we really need. I mean, slowly, laws are there. The there administration are a few isn't. little things happening, but not enough. They're not enforced. So exactly. a lot of us, all of us, as many people as possible, have to be uh, vigilant and conscientious and, uh, you know, p please care. We're, we all have hearts, we all have souls, and we share this planet with all these beautiful creatures. The dolphins are going through hell right now. There's all kinds of things that are happening. And we have a very serious situation with our cats. Mm. And and, um, hunting, 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 handing hunting. out hunting licenses for that for animals that yes. are on endangered. Sp give me a break. Yeah, I mean three hundred what seventy five thousand dollars. Disgusting, and also the, the fact that China are still killing cats and dogs in the most ex and other animals, uh, the angoras, whatever, in the most excruciating and cruel way imaginable, and this has to be stopped. Don't buy the fur, dish. clothes designers. Stop designing this crap. It's up with to a little people. Bit of no, it's up to it. people not to buy it. Just well, and, too, but and it's to also go, up to the no, designers. They go Shaman. into the store and say, "I will not buy in this store," and I will not buy that and I won't buy it because you are selling fur mm. of cats and dogs. The thing that uh, comes up too is that there's no need for animal fur anymore because no. uh, I'm wearing a fur hat right now but it's made out of dead coke bottles. I mean it's synthetic it's made out of polypropylene and, and you still are coke bottles it, ever alive? Uh, well <laughs> only when you hold them up to your lips. Well, Richard hmm. did tell me, actually, my broccoli was alive the other day. I almost <laughs> went off broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to add that. But anyway, mm -hmm. there's so many things, pe Don't animals worry. out there in, Emma, your still carrots are in danger. Horses, Shaman, we have oh, a huge look, issue with yeah. horses. It's never ending. And, you know, as much as there is a lot of shit going on in the world, we cannot put the animals aside and say, well, this comes first. Everything is important and everything comes 
comes first. The way we behave with each other. And it's a domino effect. The way yeah. we treat animals uh, reflects highly, I think, on the way that we That's treat each Gandhi other. That's what Gandhi said. The way that we treat each other. And um, I just think it's a, it's a domino effect. It's very yeah. important. And teach the children yes. to love. Yeah, absolutely. I and agree it's going to take there. some time. You know, uh, basically, yes, you're right. We have to teach it in our schools. We have to teach the children. Parents, parents, families. Parents and families. And we have to make that generational split where the children who are learning this uh, don't see older people doing it and accept it as, uh, as, as something that is part of what's normal. But you know, at Richard, thanks to social networking, yes. I know a lot of people don't like it, there have been some strides forward, oh, some yes, good positive absolutely. things well, happening. A lot of people who uh, don't like it don't even bother to use it, so it's not really an issue. And I, I guess basically some of the dinosaurs are going to have to disappear, but as long as the message is getting across to the kids yeah. that this is not acceptable, yeah. then uh, it's their world. Walter Darling, do you have anything to say? Yes, Walter. I've yeah. never heard him so quiet. I know. What have you well, done to him? <laughs> well, that's because I'm surrounded by intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm not going to say a damn thing. Yeah, we'll there. Just say something because we don't have much time. He was referring to Scotty. Oh, <laughs> <there you go. laughs> no, uh, no. People have to learn these things, but uh, you can't know about an animal unless you are around animals. You you have to learn to care for them. If they're things, they will remain as things. And uh, when I did Lassie years ago, uh, one of the lessons uh, I had them do on the show, actually, was to take the young boy out with a rifle, because farmlands have rifles. You can't get around that. This was in the script. And uh, you taught him how to use the, the rifle, squeeze the trigger, gonna pull it, all of that. But then I found a nest and a rabbit. And I had him look down the telescope at that rabbit and aim the gun at that rabbit. Am I going to cry? Yep. Because he couldn't do it. He yeah. put the rifle down. Well, that's not going to make me And cry. that was something that was really important until he got home. And the next morning, he came down to breakfast and told him, I'm going out hunting with Grandpa again. And she got furious. And he said, no, no, Mom, with a camera. Aw, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, that that's, that uh, yeah. segment, that show, actually won an Emmy. Yeah. Oh, it really? Did. Oh, wow. It did. Yeah, that won an Emmy. Yeah. It's a beautiful piece of work. I um, did one, Lassie, too. I was a crazy old aunt with a parrot. Oh, we did typecasting. And you, know, was, <laughs> and you know something? And, and, and you know Real something? Cranky. Timmy couldn't shoot you either. <laughs> oh, come on, Timmy. <laughs> they wanted to shoot me more than the parrot. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting that uh, we start to see things like uh, countries that are declaring dolphins as persons. Yes. And, and subject Incredible, to the huh? same protection that people get. Not in Japan. Well, oh. it's, got, it's got to get there. It's it's a big world, and the message will eventually get there. But it it's takes not, time. It's going to take time and per perseverance. We cannot back off. Mm -hmm. In fairness, mm -hmm. the world is changing, folks. It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. very much not so. in certain places, worse than some others, but not overall, fast enough, well, the it's, thing, well, it's not going fast, but it yeah, is actually coming, beginning it is. to people realizing that they're destroying their planet. Well, that's yeah. it. And, and basically... That. I mean, who's who's doing the hunting and the r renovation of the animal kingdom once you take away the hunters of the animal in the animal kingdom? Then you wind up having to hunt them yourself if you want to survive. The yeah. problem well, that's why isn't, we're in this situation. The, the problem isn't people are not realizing what's good and bad in nature. We've lost our nature. People in the urban centers, if they were ever put into nature, would never survive, and nature would see to it that they don't. Well, man has his own way of culling himself, too. It's called a war. That's no. one of them. One way of keeping down on the population. Oh, I hate to hear that, but yeah, I know. But it's, it's, it's a I fact. Know, it's I know. A, you know, one of the things that gets me when we talk about the way that we um, we treat animals or, or we think of animals, I was taught at a very early age that the word pet did not exist. 
that cat was not my pet. That cat was part of the family, mm. a family m- member. And I get very annoyed when I hear the people mm. saying, oh, you know, we've got a new dog, a new pet in the family. It's mm. not a pet. No. It's a family, family member. member. And I think it starts there. It's that yeah. attitude and the way you oh, think. Oh, there's another one, too. I hate it when the people are in an argument or getting uh, upset and going, you, know, you behave like an animal. Excuse oh, me? Oh, yes. Well, that's and an you insult. You behave like an animal. That's an insult to the animal. Comparing an animal to a, to a human, human is an insult to the animal, animal kingdom. Exactly. The good name of the animal kingdom oh, as far as I'm concerned. Or you're a pig or, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. all those well, very clean animals. We have to remember that human beings are animals. We are. They are part of the animal kingdom, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. like a wolf is That's or, right. or a fox. Mm-hmm. And what we are doing so you're my is pet, using... So <laughs> 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 um, I think I like Again, that. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Where's your leash, Richard? If she starts tickling your tummy in public, I'm leaving the room. Uh, I have something I want to talk that's about. An, that's such naval <laughs> friendly. Okay, we're, we're, we've all got to be quiet. Quick. No, we don't all have oh, to be quiet. Oh, at the end? No, 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 no we're, near, we're, we're coming up there. And I just, there is something I want to uh, throw in. And, and I'm hoping you're going to introduce me yes. on the show. Up. This is very special. Very, we've been waiting for this. Yeah. We are going to be talking by phone, a friend of uh, Shaman's and also someone who has worked so tirelessly mm-hmm. for this. It's her life. Susan, it's her life. Yes. Yeah. Susan. Macassie. Macassie. Yeah. Now, I'm so, not sure how to spell Macassie, but anyway, you'll let us know. But, well, well, I don't need to spell it. No, you just but, say it. But right. Shaman is going to yeah. uh, and, and elaborate she's talking, on this. She's talking about something that's so very important. Yes, it's something another that, one of all. Something that I have been aware of, um, and this is um, hoarding of animals. Mm-hmm. Now, we're not just talking. You, you, you know, had told me earlier about... A, a woman who was hoarding animals mm-hmm. in this area, mm-hmm. and that's horrendous. But we're talking about people who go out. I think it starts off with people meaning well, and then mm-hmm. there's a switch somewhere in there. Right. And what they do is they will go. There's a network of them. They go into um, other rescues and pull an animal out that is not adoptable, that cannot be made well, that they know that the rescue is going to put the animal down. And they take mm-hmm. these animals. Uh, we know of one case where there are 600 cats oh. in a farm, in, in Inside and it is there. They are in cages. Um, they are not getting proper veterinarian care. There is no chance for them. It's not even a life. For it's an not right. And these be... places, there's about four or five of them in Montreal. We know of one in Valleyfield. Um, Susan's going to tell you more about it okay. in just a few moments. But Great. I thought what I'll would be a good hear. idea is. You mentioned it. You you said earlier. How do we know that when we go to get an animal, we're not get we're, or or drop? I hate this. Drop a cat off if we can't mm. can't keep it ourselves. That we're not giving it to somewhere like this. Yes. Um, you have to go into these places and look for places that have got low adoption rates. Secrecy. You know, they'll often mm. say, "Please don't give anyone our address." Yes, but is that on Facebook? Or is that when you actually no, get you, to the place? No, when you get there. Oh, you do some research. Yeah, do some research. I can't. Can, well, uh, so they they let, want total. Let me ask you: How would you know what their adoption rates are? You can ask them. You can say, "Can I please see a list of the animals that you have adopted okay. out this week?" And if they say, "Oh well, no, I'm afraid we haven't got that," pull right back. Pull right back. It's pull like right the pet back. store okay. when you ask yeah. the papers yeah. for their animals. Yeah, so um, they don't people have need to them. know how people, to how to ask these questions. Yeah. Yes, and they're they're very. They want to be very much in control of life and death. They keep the animals who are suffering and terminal alive until the very end. They spend thousands of dollars on those animals when they know they can't be helped. It is cruel. Yeah. And it, it's it's absolutely senseless. And you really have to do your research. SPCAs, for the most part. I mean, I know mm. the Monterey is wonderful. Our SPCA in Montreal is wonderful. Your mm. SPA here. Um, mm. But when you go to these these little name groups you yeah. have got to be extremely careful and that is not to say by the way that some of these other little groups out there right. are good there are a lot more good ones than there are bad, bad ones. ones yeah but yeah you have to know what questions to yeah. ask and maybe you could give us a quick list of those questions you, quick, did, you did mention the well, uh, the adoption rate. Yeah, they asked them how many animals that they, they have adopted. Um, I'd go in and say, you don't mind, of course, if I put your, your name and your address where I've come. Um, and if they seem a little hesitant, any hesitancy, mm. speak to the volunteers coming out. A lot of them are volunteers. Um, one of them actually contacted me, some about one particular group because I came down on it on my Facebook page and said to me, we can arrange, now here right away, you're a reporter, we can arrange for you to come in and look at it. And I said, uh, yes, you could, but much better for me as a reporter to go in unannounced and take yeah, a look at it absolutely. and I will see the way you're really working. I never heard back from them. Of course not. 
You've got to be very, very careful. Mm. Am I... Uh, uh, my, uh, how about we bring my friend yes, Susan on right Susan, now? Sorry, I was listening and focused on you, I Shaman. Mean, all right. <laughs> yes, let us introduce right now Susan Mackesy, friend of Shaman's and wonderful, wonderful, caring lady who's doing a lot of good work up there in Montreal. And she Please, has her own group. And she has. Well, you're going to do that. You're going to do that bit. Oh, you know, you're going to okay, do that. You do Shaman, because you're better at positive. Two of us each other's <laughs> like we're in a cat fight here. Uh, <laughs> She's got long Technician nails Scott. <laughs> Would you like to, <laughs> to <laughs> dial Pitty that number? Yes. 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 Get out the tasers you've and put these the guys. Uh, you've got all no, the okay, I'll, I'll, I'll talk with yeah. Susan. Petit pause, and my French is not so good, so I was kind of embarrassed to say petit pause. But I said it very well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well done. This is going to be wonderful. Here we go, Suzanne. Hey there, Susan. Have we got you on the line? Yeah, I'm right here, Charmin. Hi, how are you? I'm good. That's Susan Mackesy from Petite Paws, and that is a rescue group that I totally and fully endorse. Uh, I do as much as I can for it when I can. Uh, Susan, you're doing a marvelous job. Thank you very much, and thanks for all the support. You're always there at all our events, and we, we so appreciate it. Now, uh, it's going to be a little bit more um, loud today than when you've done interviews with me in the past. Were you we looking have, at me when you said that? Yes, I was. That, I that is Richard Gagnon, and we have Emma Stevens. This is their show. Uh-oh, so you have troublemakers with you? I have, well, Absolutely. No, it's me, and we have the troublemakers with us. <laughs> <laughs> the animal activists, and down the, the and, voice of and reason you will is notice, here. And you will notice that there's one quiet one. I hear Walter. That is Walter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Susan, um, just tell us a little bit about this situation because not uh, you've been on this from um, the very start and not only have you been on it from the very start, you've gone in and you have seen some of this and I've seen some of the pictures that you have posted. Can you tell us a little bit about the situation? Absolutely. What I refer to it is institutional hoarding. We've all heard of individual hoarders, you know, the typical little old lady that has a lot of cats and becomes overwhelmed and, and that is sad for the person and also sad for the animals but there's there's something that's even in a way more serious it's um large operations that pose as rescues some of them even have their charitable um registration so they, they issue tax receipts and whatnot but they have a large number of cats and or dogs um they will not kill, uh, euthanize them if they are suffering. So you've got an overcrowded situation with animals who are dying in, in little cages um, that will not be, they either do not have the funds to properly vet them or they don't believe in, uh, it's a sickness, they don't believe in euthanizing unless they're at the very, very, very brink of death. Now, you know, my own personal opinion about this is that these people start off with very good intentions and um, somehow they are not able to draw the line. We love animals and I'm sure they love these animals too, but they're not able to draw that line and say, this is wrong, this is cruel, this cat, this dog must be put down. Absolutely. Uh, the difference is after a while, after like for instance, the, the places, the, including the place I went into, has been operating. This this woman has been operating for twenty years. She's she's beyond feeling now. Um, you know that saying, "The road to hell is paved with good intentions." Mm -hmm. Her intentions, it, they're objects. It's it's a. I've done so much research on this that it, it's beyond. She's she's numb to seeing a cat. What I saw was very hard to digest. And she has no feelings on the matter at all. It's it's almost like a controlling of life and death. So it's beyond the, the lady that, you know, wants to help the cats and becomes overwhelmed and has good intentions. Um, this is, is uh, an environment of fear. The, the volunteers are, are faced with fear, hostility, anxiety. Um, it's a very controlling person, this particular case. And I really, truly believe there's no feeling anymore. Uh, revenues, in one example, has been $1.6 million over the past several years, yet they do not have money for uh, litter. They don't have money for ample food. Um, volunteers are paying for operations. There's, when I did go in, there was a sign on one of the cats in the infirmary's door saying, this cat is in a lot of pain. Uh, it needs a dental operation, but he's not a priority here because we don't have the funds. If a is, volunteer would like to pay, please come forward. Okay, was that the cat, the, the beautiful gin, ginger male that was um, that I saw up on your page? 
Uh, no, that was another cat. It okay. was a, um, it was a cat. He was in the picture that I took. Neurological problems, wasn't it? Um, that one on the chart says that the cat may have neurological problems. They have removed all the teeth from the cat. That's why the um, the tongue is hanging out. Mm -hmm. They will spend thousands and thousands of dollars on cats that are on the brink of death that have no quality of life and will not have quality of life. They've got mouth ulcers, uh, secondary infections from FIV and feline leukemia. Um, they're kept alive for a long, long time. Uh, they will spend money on keeping them alive. Vets will say, it's time to euthanize. You've got to let them go, and they bring them back. Or and or they change vets, too, don't they? So that They, they jump from vet to vet. Because yeah. Shalma, can I just... Yeah, to jump, yes. Susan, this is really so interesting because I'm sort of new at this, uh, speaking out and doing this radio show and everything, as much as I love animals. You're not new at speaking out. Uh, no, that's true. Um, all my life, and I have five rescue dogs and one cat, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, what, what I'm not understanding, because I am seeing uh, Petit Paws, I'm seeing all the, the Pussy Patrol, you know, all these organizations thinking wow this is great you know I'm like uh, everybody else thinking there's people out there doing these mm -hmm. things is there isn't there something out there when these organizations start up now we know the puppy mills uh, as far as I'm concerned are illegal these people right you tell you saying to me they're getting money and you just said a million and then whatever over a number of years over a number of years yeah but is there, my question though, Susan, sorry, I'm rushing because I know we don't have much time and, I'm, and I, you've got to come down here and we'll have you on the show. You can have the whole show. <laughs> but um, is there nobody in some, uh, who's watching over all of this? And you want to know, Emma, how can you or how can anybody out there know that when they go to a shelter or they take an animal to a shelter, mm. that they're not giving the animal That's over right. to a situation like this? Yeah, but first of all, my first question, the one I'd like to know is really right now is, isn't there anybody overseeing all of this when somebody starts up a big barn and they're getting money? Is, this, is there nobody going in and looking at this and paying attention? What's MAPAC on? is. It, very limited. There's an or yeah, okay. a government organization called MAPAC, which is M-A-P-A-Q. But the standards uh, are really low. Like they want to make sure that the cat has, a uh, the animals have ample water, food, and space. Even though they don't, in the, in many situations, they don't have ample space. They're overcrowded. Um, they don't know because they can walk into an infirmary and the people can say, "Oh yes, we're taking care of them. We're nursing them back to health." They don't bring in a veterinarian with them unless. Mm -hmm. They're reported. So I did report this organization because I had to go in and see for myself. I didn't want all the hearsay. I had volunteers coming right. forward. I went in and saw for myself. Um, I was quite shocked at what I saw. <laughs> MAPAC went in within 90 hours, which is unheard of. Um, but that being said, doesn't mean that anything's going to be done. What the mm. public needs to look at is, like, the, the, they all have this, all these um, hoarders have this... Um, in common. They're all secretive. The first mm -hmm. thing when I walked in the door was you are not under any circumstances to reveal our address or our phone number. Mm -hmm. I went in as a vol uh, pretending to be a volunteer. You saw a sign up on one of the walls, didn't you, saying not to let you in? That's right, because <laughs> they know they, there's two signs and they, because yeah. they know that, you know, I'm I'm on to this. Mm -hmm. They have low adoption rates, but they pretend. They do bring they do have adoption days, but it's with a select group of cats. The termini terminally ill animals are kept alive, even though they should be euthanized. Um, I've been accused of, you know, wanting to euthanize all cats in shelters. That's absolutely not true. I just don't believe in animals that are suffering and are dying and will not get better no matter what treatment they have. I do not see them living in cages for two or three or six months. I don't think that's humane. Um, they do not, they, they keep taking in animals. They don't have funds to properly treat the cats. Mm. Reputable shelters, I'm sorry I'm talking fast, but I know. It's okay, okay, it's okay go on. Reputable shelters are transparent. You can either call or make an appointment or you can go, you know, like the SPCA, you can go right, right in there. Mm -hmm. uh, they have realistic adoption rates. Uh, they may have many cats cause there's, or dogs. There are a lot of animals out there, but they're all sterilized, vaccinated, vetted, terminally ill cats are humanely euthanized. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's, you need to research before. We, what we do is we list, we have a list of reputable shelters. We have to be careful, obviously, for defamation purposes. 
um, the ones that we know are hoarders. Mm -hmm. it, they're all interrelated. It's like an underground world. They all help each other. They all hide each other's animals. Oh. Um, it's really devastating, and um, I really think it's passive cruelty. Yes. And everybody thinks it's better for them to be like that than to be out on the streets. I don't agree. One of, one of these people has got 600 cats. Yes. Oh, no. In a farmhouse, 600 yes. cats. In, indoors, too. Indoors. Not out, not out in yeah. the farm, no. Susan, I just wanted to give you a very quick example. I don't know if this is of any help to you at all. We have a new guy that's been appointed here by our, um, what do we call this, our... S-P-A, and it's for cats and dogs. Not that I'm, you know, thrilled because I, I still see the, the animals are, being, are still in cages, but they get to walk, they get fed, they get vetted and all the rest of it. But he also is called... Out. We have 18 puppy mills in just this little area alone. And he's already raided three. And every time they go out and raid, it costs an awful lot of money, but at least he's doing it. Many of the animals are so badly uh, sick and, and whatever that they do have to be euthanized and all the rest of it. Right. He's doing, this guy is doing a great job. I don't know whether if other municipalities have the same kind of operation going, but it, it's worth a thought maybe finding out or asking about it. On, on top of that, he was also called into, just like you said, in a farmhouse, 600 yeah. cats. We had a woman in Cowansville with God knows how many. I was just telling yeah, that, Sharman the story. It's a private person oh, doing yeah, it. A yeah. private lady in her apartment, the sink to the, to the, full to the brim with black stuff and cats having uh, the kittens in the walls because there was nowhere else, blind, one ear. It was terrible. It is. But they went in, the firemen, and they were, they were able to take all the cats out. M most of them had to be euthanized because they were so sick. Susan, we should give out uh, the number if anybody um, is aware of situations like this. Um, come forward. It's very yes. important. Yes, and you can be anonymous. You, yes. It's very important for volunteers just yeah. to put aside that fear, come out and report anybody can report okay to that is what we're facing is the volunteers are afraid they're afraid yeah. of cats can I, I'm going to give out the phone number sure. from MAPAC, yep. which is the Santé et Bien-être des Animaux, is 418-380-2120, and uh, free, without charge, you can you call. you want to repeat that, please, Sharon? Well, I'm going to give the free one, too. It's 1-800-463-5023. Okay. 1-800-463-5023. And the other number is 418-380-2120. And if anybody wants those numbers, they can call here to the radio station and yes. we will make sure that you get them. One of the things I wanted to know, Susan, is how do we find your page or your internet page or whatever it is so that we can find out where the reliable or trustworthy operations are? Absolutely. You can find us on, on um, Facebook. You can just plug in Pity Paws, which I'll spell for you. Oh, okay. Not normal and not regular. It's <laughs> E-T-I-T. T S, like Susan, P A W Z. It's P A W Z. Yep, P A W Z, okay. and also we have a website which is uh, www.pittypause.net. Spelled the same way. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Susan, as usual, you are fantastic. Yes, thank you, um, Susan. Well done, Susan. And it's she's just marvelous what mm. Su what this girl does, what she stands up for, and uh, the group of people around her. Um, I support her wholeheartedly, and uh, and I've become to know her, um, and I call her a friend as well. Definitely right. a friend. Thank you, Susan. Mm -hmm. Thank you thank so you, much, Susan. Susan. Thank Hope you to much meet you much. soon. Come down as I soon will. as you can. Thank you. I would love to meet you in person. Okay. Love thank to meet you. you. Okay. All right, my dear. Take good care. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to CIDI 99.1 FM in beautiful downtown Knowlton, where you could have been listening to J-Lo or something else, but you're listening to Emma and Richard with Walter and Sharman on Unleashed backed up by Scotty, who seems to do all the work around here. <laughs> <laughs> you can, ah, he's got them fooled. <laughs> you, can you can find us at uh, CIDIFM.com, where you can listen to us streamed into your, through your computer, or you can call us up at 450-242-9873 and make comments, leave messages. We'd be love to hear from you, and we'd be happy to get back to you. 
any rate, we're running out of time. And I think you're going to hear the background so, music so in a minute. So take care. There take it is. care of each other. Blah, blah, blah. No, sure. Go ahead, Emma. Go. No, no, no. That's yours, 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 yours. I'm tongue-tied. Take care of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's new. She's a that, comedian right, as yeah. well. <laughs> that happened to the Rialto, actually. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, uh, advise the media because this is the first time it's ever happened.